Welcome to Advent. It's uh, December 1st, and uh, this is a virtual version of the Lord's Day service. We'll start by reading three short passages. The first one is from Jeremiah. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and that at the time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And in those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Our next reading is uh, Psalm 25. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. I do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you to be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, of your steadfast love. For they have been told from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is righteous, and he teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his commandments and his decrees. And uh, our gospel reading is from Luke, Luke 21. Hear what the Spirit saying to the church. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by all the roaring of the seas and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things take place, Stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see yourselves, and you know that summer is already near. And also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life and catch and that day catch you unexpected like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times praying that you will have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and stand before the Son of Man. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Creaking floors, the hoot of an owl, hoot, hoot, the distant clang of a forlorn bell, the dark fog rolls in, and you can barely make out the slow flashing of an amber light. If somebody quickly, quietly snuck up behind you and screamed, boo, you would probably lose your mind in such a scene. You might even, you might even at least pee your pants. (laughs) Carol and I really enjoy watching the masterpiece uh, theater dramas on, uh, on PBS. And uh, we've been enjoying this one that's kind of an edgy one. It's an edgy crime drama called Vandervalk, and it takes place in Amsterdam. And it has lots of creepy scenes like this, you know, port city and dark and foreboding. And I've noticed that every episode has cops kicking down doors at night, you know, and then holding their 
their guns and their with their flashlights on top and they're jerking around you know unlit corners and they're covering each other and at the end of almost every episode uh there's always a standoff you know uh guns pointed uh in three different ways you know kind of like the good and the bad and the ugly and that triangle who's going to shoot first and i can't count count the number of times that vandervalk puts his gun down in such situations and boldly approaches somebody with a drawn gun. He's crazy, isn't he? How can he be so bold? Only for someone to rush in behind those bad guys and take them out. Phew. How can we handle the tension of such a situation? (laughs) While I'm sure real police work does involve regular uh, or does involve scary scenes in the dark occasionally there's no way that real policemen would take the kind of risks that Vandervalk does and you know if they do maybe if it happens in their once or twice in their career it only happens because things have gone terribly wrong it's darker and scarier in our dramatic imaginations than reality but isn't life always like this that ghosts and demons are in the dark, are always bigger and scarier and more terrifying than they are in the day of light. Each first Sunday of Advent starts out dark and uncertain. We've just come off of the, you know, the high Sunday of Christ the King Sunday last week, Um, And we hit the reset button every year, and now we're starting all over again on the church year. Only the contrast between Good Friday and Easter Sunday provides a bigger mood shift than this this, uh, week does in the church calendar. Last Sunday, I chose to take a little bit different tack than normal for Christ the King Sunday, rather than speaking about Christ victorious, you know, emphasize, I emphasize the cross instead, the fact that Jesus was killed and was lost at the cross. And I know the reason why I did this was simple. It just felt too discordant in this time to talk about victory when so many people are consumed with worry and have foreboding about what will happen in the coming years. My sermon had more of a feel, my last week's sermon had more of a feel of a first Sunday in Advent uh, sermon than Christ the King Sunday. But every good sermon has light and uplifting moments and dark and worrisome moments. And frankly, unless a sermon is like this and acknowledges the complexity of your life, it's just not worth listening to. So with this head start on Advent this year, where do we go from? We start drained and we start confused in the darkness and we cry out to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, O my God, in you I trust. Now, this is actually capitulation. This is saying that we've tried to lift ourselves up. We've tried to put our trust in everything else. But when it's down to brass tacks, it's we come to God. And this is what this psalm does. And it's followed by this. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you to be put to shame let them be let those be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous i've had enough it basically says i just want god to protect me and guide me instead of being self-made and self-sufficient it's okay to give it up and leave it to god now this is more than just a psychological trick um it's more than just wearing us down instead it's facing reality that the, the reality that we just can't do it ourselves, that we rely on others, that we rely on God. And Advent is all about this. Advent is always about this. It's about, it's when we do Advent right, we set aside the busyness 
and the controlling attitudes, and we rest in the promise of the coming Messiah, and we await the coming Messiah. Now, it seems odd that today's gospel passage comes from Luke 21. You know, it's Advent season, right? Jesus hasn't even been born yet. And we're talking about the destruction of the temple in cosmic terms just the week in the week before Jesus' death? Wait a minute, how does that fit? It's because it's the setup for the coming crisis. The crisis of faith. Jesus will, uh, you know, will, will uh, cry out on the cross, God, why are you abandoning me? Why have you forsaken me? He says. But we slowly come to terms as the weeks go on that we're preparing for the coming of the Christ child. This is kind of the low point this Sunday. But this is also why I love this Sunday so much. We're done with the pomp and circumstance. We're done with the victorious stuff. We're done with the triumphalism. And we're getting ready for the main show again. In the opening scene of Hamlet, Shakespeare's play, the sentinels are taking are changing guard, and it's night, and it's spooky, and the soldiers, other soldiers, are standing around with Hamlet's friend Horatio, the truth teller, Horatio, and it's one of those dark and spooky nights, like the PBS series I was talking about. All of their senten- all their senses are heightened, and they're hearing things. And suddenly they see a ghost who, at least in this scene, won't answer. And it's the ghost of Prince Hamlet's dead father who had been murdered. And they don't understand the ghost, but the ghost will set the stage for the rest of the tragedy. And he comes in a sense of mystery. Jesus says, truly I tell you, This generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. That day will come to you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the earth. Boo! (laughs) It's a bit like this scene is that there's a reckoning that's coming. There is a ghost in the midst. Now all of your senses are peaked. And you're awaiting something. How can you not be alert? The great irony of this Sunday is that it's called Hope Sunday. Hope Sunday. Unlike the murder mystery, unlike Hamlet, though, which are filled with death and retribution, the hope here is the glimmer of hope even in the depths of darkness. The foreboding is there, the reckoning is there, but we ask God to lift us up. We can put our trust in him. We demand that he takes away our shame. We expect him to protect us from our enemies. In plain sight, those enemies can be resisted, but also the enemies that are hidden in the deep, dark recesses of our mind. If you're like me, and I suspect you are, we really need Advent this year. The worry, the weariness is pervasive. We've been through so much. War, pestilence, inflation, worries about our government, and even our democracy. We've seen the economic statistics that look pretty good. We've seen poll numbers that we thought would lead elsewhere, but we aren't feeling it in our guts. The results aren't what we expected. Perhaps instead of searching for false hopes in ourselves and in our world, this is a call to look deeper and to look at the ever-present hope of Jesus that's coming. 
and we're looking for Jesus for, we're looking at Jesus for a change looking toward the cross Jesus also says be alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape these things that will take place and stand before the son of man the strange thing about crime shows and tragedies like hamlet is that we keep coming back to them we keep watching them again we keep discovering new things in them we're strangely comforted by the spookiness and the macabre it's almost as if we've confronted seeing uh seeing the worst and knowing that it's still possible even with that we can still see be sane it's still possible to see hope it's still there are glimmers there no matter how bad it gets one of the most important things about advent is that we face life as it really is and that we realize our need for change our need for god our need for redemption the kind of redemption that only a messiah can bring this is the one great constant in our lives jeremiah says that the days are surely coming when the branch of david will execute justice and righteousness in the land this is hope this was hope for the israelites and the judeans this is hope for us today so there we have it hope sunday the recognition of the need and the hope to make right someday someday will come someday soon in four short weeks we will find out my hope for you is that as we study the names of Jesus in our bible study and as we walk step through step week to week through this through hope through peace through joy and through love sundays we will be prepared for the coming of the messiah and we will be prepared to face this messy frightening foreboding time of life that we have now and that we will truly find hope peace joy and love together let us pray god of advent we begin this church year with a deepened sense of worry about the future lift us up bring us peace in knowing that you will protect us from shame that we can put our trust in you let us celebrate the coming of Christ and the hope that that brings in the name of the promised one Jesus we pray amen